welcome to Fantasia, home of the Melodias. My name's Azalea, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the update to my Trickstar deck. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into this. So starting off, we are playing with the most important card in the deck, three copies of Trickstar Candina. Now Candina is fantastic because upon normal summon, you can pretty much search out your entire deck. And so that's why you definitely have to run her at three. Now the next card that we play is going to be three copies of Trickstar Lycoris. Now Lycoris is what made the deck infamous for all of the burn damage, because every time your opponent adds a card to their hand, doesn't matter from where, they're going to take 200 burn damage, and that piles up a lot with uh, the um, field spell damage that your opponent is going to receive. So every time they add something to their hand, they're going to take 400 damage, and that damage can really add up over time. Now, the last card that we play here is going to be one copy of Trickstar Lilybell, and Lilybell is fantastic, of course, because she has, like, this little toolbox capability. She can help add things like Lycoris from your graveyard back to your hand, and you can kind of loop them around uh, with Firewall for, like, a pseudo-FTK if your opponent has something on the field that your Lycoris can crash into. Okay, so now moving on into some of the other Trickstar cards that I play, they're really just here for text, and I'll explain why uh, I'm playing these cards in just a little bit. So we're playing one copy of Trickstar Nightshade, one copy of Trickstar Mandrake, one copy of Trickstar Narcissus, and then one copy of Trickstar Rodin. And um, these four cards I have at one of for each because they're really just here for little toolboxing reasons. Now this build of Trickstars is like a compromise between casual and competitive. It's not something that's meant to top tournaments. Of course, you can always go, you know, check out the YCS deck profiles and things like that if you're trying to be competitive with the deck. But I also didn't want to make it like what I previously had, which was the brilliant Trickstars, where it was a little bit like more on the casual side where you weren't really looking to compete with the top tier decks. Um, this build is a little compromised between both, and so I have things like Trickstar Nightshade here, which can become a one uh, one card link to, basically. You can easily go into your Holly Angel, you can easily go into uh, some of your other Trickstar monsters like Crimson Heart if you have access to that. Now, Mandrake is a card that's here because Nightmares exist, and Nightmares with Ni Mandrake is so good. So if you have Mandrake in your hand, if she is discarded from your hand, um, you can actually special summon her back from your graveyard, but she gets banished when she leaves the field. So she's really good in terms of uh, pitching with something like your Nightmares, special summoning her back, and then using her and some of the Nightmares to kind of link climb into higher link monsters, which is really good for toolboxing. Now, Narcissus is probably the least useful out of all of these right now, because the fact that you can't really consistently summon her out on your turn, um, unless of course you're inflicting some amount of burn damage to your opponent on your turn, but that usually doesn't happen. Uh, what she's really good for though is coupled with something like your uh, Lycoris, you can easily special summon her out from your hand on your opponent's turn when they take some burn damage during their draw phase or something like that, and uh, she acts as a little body on the field, and you can also of course bring her back uh, by other means with something like reincarnation and such. So that's why she's here as a little tech. She's a really nice monster to have because she's also level 4, which gives you access to some rank 4 plays if you're playing those. And now we're also playing one copy of Road, and Road she's really decent uh, mid to late game because you can just, uh, you know, summon her, uh, discard another Trickstar card, and then special summon back a Link monster from your graveyard. Um, so she's really good for just uh, recovering some boards. Now these are all little tech cards. You don't have to run these if you don't want to, but I found them to be pretty fun, uh, especially in this like more of a pure variant of Trickstars, so I definitely recommend trying them out. So yeah, okay, moving on uh, to some of the hand traps that we play. We're playing three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Now, you don't have to play Ash Blossom if you don't have these. You can definitely play something like Effect Veiler. You can definitely play something like Ghost Ogre in its place. Effect Veiler might actually be really good right now because of the fact that it hurts um, things like Gokis a lot. And you can actually hit um, things like Sky Strikers and their Link Monsters. So it's definitely a really good card. Now, the other card that's going to definitely hurt... Um, Sky Strikers a lot, and uh, Gokis actually for that matter, is going to be Droll and Lockbird. So we're playing three copies of this. And Droll and Lockbird is one of those cards that synergizes really well with Trickstars because you have access to Reincarnation. So after your opponent searches and you drop the Droll and Lockbird, you can Reincarnation their entire hand and they cannot draw any more cards. So they basically uh, have nothing left to play with. So that's definitely a thing that can happen. It doesn't happen very consistently, but it's definitely uh, an option to go for. 
And the last hand trap that I play is gonna be two copies of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Now, I only play two copies of Ghost Ogre because, of course, she does only have a once per turn effect, so you can't use multiples in a single turn. Uh, and she's a little bit less useful than Droll and Ash Blossom, especially in a deck like this. So, it's nice to be able to hit field spells, it's nice to be able to hit big monsters uh, when they activate their effects on the field, but other than that, um, she's not really as useful as the other two. So yeah, that does it for all of the monsters. Next off, we're going to go into the spell cards. Alright guys, so for the spell cards, starting off, we're playing with some of the field spells. So, we're playing three copies of Trickstar Light Stage. That's very standard in a Trickstar deck because upon activation, she can basically search out any Trickstar monster in your deck. And it also has the ability to lock down your opponent's back row and inflicts damage to your opponent every time another Trickstar monster inflicts damage as well. So it's really nice and it helps your damage stack up, especially with cards like Lycoris. So it's definitely good to run at three. Now the next card that I play is going to be one copy of Trickstar Light Arena. Now the reason why you play one copy of Light Arena is because uh, it's a nice little tech and this deck does like to link summon quite a bit, uh, link climbing up to different things. So, you know, if you have your other Trickstar monsters, the ones that I run as a tech, you know, if you have things like your Trickstar Mandrake, your Trickstar Nightshades, those are the monsters that you can easily bring back from the graveyard with this card's effect and then use them again to link summon into higher uh, link monsters basically. Um, we play very low link monsters like we have link ones because Trickstar Bloom was something that was released in Flames of Destruction and you can use her to climb into you know Crimson Horror, you can uh, use it to climb into your Holly Angel and whatever else you would need at the time. And of course, uh, we're also playing three copies of Terraforming to search these cards out. Now, the reason why there's only one copy of Light Arena is because of the fact that you don't really use it more than once in a duel. You use it to revive something, and then once that thing is revived, you kind of replace it with Light Stage, and then go into your other plays, because that really helps you with more consistency. Okay, so yeah, that's going to be it for the field spells. Next off, we're going to go into some of the other cards that we run. So... Starting off, we're playing three copies of the power card in this deck, Scapegoat. Three copies of Scapegoat is definitely very, very useful and important for this deck because the fact that you need to have tokens and things in order to help you link summon. It also gives you a bunch of utility with the different types of link monsters that you can go into. You, can, you also have things, uh, you know, you can access things like Mrs. Radiance, uh, Link Spiders, Proxy Dragons, Deco Talkers, Nightmares, and all the other good stuff, which we'll get into when we get into the extra deck. Alright, so um, next off we only have three more spells left, and they're all really just one of techs. So I play one copy of Trickstar Bouquet, and I really love this card. This is a fantastic card because it helps enable so many OTKs. Trickstars already have a pretty decent time OTKing through a clear board, so it's not really necessary for that. But against an opponent that has uh, an established board, or maybe just one or two high attack monsters, Trickstar Bouquet can easily help boost the attack of some of your other monsters so that they can attack over your opponent's stuff. And this card, of course, is searchable by Trickstar Candina, so it's very easily accessible, and you only really need one, because outside of the OTKs, it's not really that useful, so it's just a little tech to run. Now, I'm also playing one copy of Monster Reborn, because it's Monster Reborn, and bringing a back Link monsters from your graveyard is definitely not a bad option. And last but not least, I'm playing one copy of Raigeki because Trickstars have a pretty difficult time getting over your opponent's established fields, especially because of the fact that, you know, your monsters are really, really small, and even your Link monsters have a pretty niche effect, so you're going to have to have other ways to clear out massive fields, uh, and Raigeki is just the card for that. Well, that does it for these spell cards, and that does it f well, that does it for the spell cards. Next off, we're going to go into the trap cards. So for the trap cards, starting off, of course, you have to play three copies of Trickstar Reincarnation, which I don't have access to right now, but um, it's definitely going to get reprinted, hopefully, uh, later on this year. Now, Trickstar Reincarnation is pretty self-explanatory. You loop your opponent's hand out, banishing all the cards in their hand, and then you can also use it as a monster reborn effect in the graveyard by banishing this card, and then special summoning a Trickstar monster back from your graveyard. And that's the effect that I really use it for most of the time, because the uh, additional monster on the field can uh, be the huge difference between you establishing your field and you not being able to. So that's, uh, that's definitely a key factor in this deck.
Now next off, I'm running two copies of Storming Mirror Force. You can also run things like Blazing Mirror Force, whatever it's called, the fire one uh, that inflicts burn damage to your opponent. Uh, I prefer running Storming Mirror Force because if your opponent's uh, making a bunch of uh, link monsters and they're all co-linked, you know, with the new nightmares and things where they can protect themselves from card effects, uh, Storming Mirror Force is a great way to just break that because you can just send them all back to the extra deck and you clear out your opponent's entire field. And this is also really good because Trick Stars, typically you're going to get your boards cleared. Um, you know, you're going to end your turn with like a Lycoris or something else on your side of the field if you're going first. And your opponent is probably going to put a mass amount of damage on board to be able to attack into you. And having that Storm Mirror Force, Mirror Forces aren't really expected in this current format. So it's something that can you, you can use to easily break the boards of unexpecting and unwary opponents. So... Definitely found a lot of success in that. Uh, next off, I'm playing two copies of Solemn Strike for the effect negation and basically just like uh, summon negation. You know, if your opponent's uh, trying to link summon into things, you can interrupt those. And we're playing one copy of Solemn Judgment because it is judgment and God says no. So that's pretty much it for the trap lineup. Um, and that does it for the main deck. So next off, we're going to go into the extra deck. All right, guys, so for the extra deck, starting off, we're playing one copy of Trickstar Bloom. Now, Trickstar Bloom only requires a uh, level two or lower Trickstar monster. So we have so many things that actually fit those requirements. Uh, we have things, of course, like Lilybell. You have uh, your... Uh, Mandrake and your Nightshade. So those three monsters can easily go ahead and make Trickstar Bloom. Nightshade especially, if you just normal summon her, make Bloom, uh, and she is sent to the graveyard, she can special summon herself back because she was used as a material for the link summon of a Trickstar monster, and then you can easily use that to climb into either your Crimson Heart, which we have right here, or a copy of your Holly Angel, which we have right here. Now, these are all the Trickstar Link monsters that I play. I don't believe you need more than this because the fact that you can easily bring them back from the graveyard, uh, with your Trickstar Reincarnation. Now, Crimson Heart is a really good monster because the fact that it allows you to draw cards, um, it makes your opponent draw a card as well, which kind of sucks, but if you have Lycoris on the field, it really doesn't matter. Uh, and Crimson Heart could potentially let you draw two cards uh, if you have more than 2,000 life points in your opponent, which is not that difficult, seeing as all the burn damage adds up pretty quickly. Now, Holly Angel is also a really good card because of its bottom left and bottom right arrows, and she protects your Trickstar monsters in those uh, zones uh, from battle and by card effects, which is actually pretty nice. Um, and she's a pretty good monster to have on your side of the field because she can easily boost her own attack points uh, every time your Trickstar monsters inflict a burn damage to your opponent, so that's kind of nice. And... Um Yes, she can become a pretty decent beat stick that can attack over some of your opponent's monsters, so that's pretty good. That's pretty much it for the uh, Trickstar Link monsters. Next off, we're going to go into some of the cards that we summon from Scapegoat. So, from Scapegoat, we're summoning definitely uh, copies of Link Spider. Now, uh, you can summon things like, I believe, uh, Link Karibo with it as well, but I prefer Link Spider because it's Earth, because it has more attack points, as a 1,000 attack, and you can easily conduct OTKs with uh, Mrs. Radiant, if Mrs. Radiant's also on the field as well. Now, Mrs. Radiant can boost the attack of Link Spider by 500 points, which is kind of nice. Uh, Mrs. Radiant herself was just sit at uh, 1900, and you have Link Spiders with 1500 and 1500 if you summon them to the Link Markers uh, that Mrs. Radiant points to. And that by itself is already a ton of damage on the field. The Link Spiders will be 3,000 damage, and this is almost 2,000 damage right there. So you're dealing 4,900 damage to your opponent if they have an empty field just with a single scapegoat. And if you have anything else, like a Candina, which can search out Lycoris, you basically have an OTK on board. So that's definitely very, very potent. Now, we also have one copy of Proxy Dragon right here um, because of the fact that you can just make Link Spider and then two tokens can make Proxy Dragon if you need the two arrows. Um, and then you can also use those to climb into your Decode Talker if you want something that's a little bit bigger uh, and that can protect your cards from targeting. Maybe your opponent is trying to destroy your spell and trap cards in the back row or things like that. Decode Talker is a fantastic card to help you protect your field. Um, so yeah, that's basically it for the cards that we summon off of the scapegoats. Um, it, scapegoat can also, of course, help you climb to nightmares and things like that, but we'll get into that in just a bit. So for the cards that are a little bit more generic, we're playing one copy of Underclock Taker. Underclock Taker is here because it's a fantastic card to get rid of Ibli if it's ever summoned to your side of the field. Um, apparently it's not a very popular strategy, at least in upper level tournaments, um, because it could be a little bit more inconsistent and it just takes a lot more time to establish those boards. But, uh, it, you know, in case you ever do run into it, Underclock Taker is here. It's also just really good for the strategy of Trickstars anyway, because you can inflict more damage to your opponent if you just lower their attack 
attack points. So if you summon something like Candina into the zone that Under Clock Taker points to, you can decrease the attack of one of your opponent's monsters by 1800 points, and then you can easily run over it, which is kind of nice. Now, of course, I've been talking about this for a while, but now we're finally going to showcase them, the nightmare cards that we play. So we're playing one copy of Cerberus, one copy of Phoenix, and one copy of Goblin. And these cards are very, very powerful, not only because they're generic, but because uh, they have really good effects as well. Cerberus can pop a special summon monster that your opponent controls in their main monster zone. Um, Phoenix can help uh, help pop spell and trap cards, and then Goblin can give you an additional normal summon. So all of these cards are extremely, extremely powerful. And if they are co-linked when they're summoned, you can, of course, uh, draw cards from it. So that's also nice. Helps you cycle th through some things, can put your reincarnations to the graveyard so you can monster reborn on that same turn. Uh, can help you discard things like your Mandrake so she can special summon herself back from the graveyard. And then you can use that to kind of link climb into uh, different strategies that you can go for from there. So yeah. Yeah. That's basically it uh, for these cards right here. Last thing I want to mention before I take these away, Goblin is extremely powerful because you can normal summon another Candina that turn, and you can go for additional searches. So getting two Candina searches in a single turn is absolutely fantastic. Now, the last two Link monsters that I play are going to be one copy of Firewall Dragon and one copy of Borolo Dragon, which unfortunately I don't have copies of uh, in real life, but Firewall Dragon helps you with your little Lily Bell Lycoris loops, and then Borolo Dragon helps you just attack over opponent's monsters that are really big, or you can of course steal their Borolodes and then use that Borolode against them. But yeah, those are just a few examples of some niche, niche situations that these cards can help you get out of. And then, last but not least, I play one uh, XYZ in this deck, and I play one copy of Abyss Dweller. Now, you feel free to replace this with whatever you feel like is necessary, but I feel like Abyss Dweller is a very powerful card going into this format because the fact that Gokis are definitely a thing, and they did uh, get into the top 32s and top 16s, I believe, at the recent YCSs, so that's definitely something to watch out for. It's a very popular deck, and people really like uh, comboing off, so this shuts down a bunch of graveyard effects. Also really good against True Dracos, preventing their spell and trap cards in the graveyard from activating and destroying the stuff on your side of the field. But yeah, that does it for the extra deck and that does it for the deck profile. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please leave a like, subscribe for more Trickstar content, and leave a comment down below letting me know what I can do to improve. And until next time, take care.